Yeah. All right. Get everybody in. All right. All right. We'll get them. We'll get them. Nope, 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 nope. Just stay put. We'll get them. They'll be in. They'll be in. They'll be in. All righty. Come on in, guys. All right, everybody look up this way. Here we go. Looking this way, girls, guys. First night was the boys in the penny contest. Last night was the girls. Who's going to win tonight's penny contest? Will it be the boys? Will it be the girls? Will it be the boys? Will it be the girls? Oh, you're outnumbered, girls. You're going to need some help over here for the girls, all right? And uh, let's get them. They have the plates. Put your pennies in the plate. They're going to pass them right now. We're going to see who wins the contest tonight. Get out your pennies. We're starting. Let her go. Put them in the plate. You may have to help here, Don. Something may get too heavy for them to handle it. They're not going to be able to lift it without spilling it. There you go. Right over a little bit. I had it earlier. There it is. Perfect. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't put him in yet. Wait till Don gets up here. You got it? No? Still got more to go? Throw him in there. That every every penny counts. There we go. There we go. There you go. Oh, we got you beat. Oh, I can see the handwriting on the wall here. Put him in. Put him in. All right. On Wednesday night. Oh, boy. Girls, somebody messed up. You know what? That's a dollar, but it didn't weigh very much. Okay, it could have been two rolls of pennies right there. Make sure you trade it in for the pennies. All right. The winner in Wednesday night penny contest is the boys. All right. Great job. Great job, guys. All right. Now, last night we did the hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. You got it down now, guys? You know what you're doing? Girls, you know what you're doing? You understand how to do hallelujah, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord? You got it? You got some help back here now on your side, okay? You got Brother Yoder on your side? That's huge. You got Brother Lindemann on your side? That's huge. Okay? All right. Need our helpers up here. Where are they? Emily, come on. Bob's over here for the guys. All right, guys, you're going to start with hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So on your feet, all right? Let's hear who's going to be the loudest. Uh, let's see, back here in the back, we're going to have uh, Rob Beach. You determine who's going to be loudest, okay? You listen from where you are, all right? Okay, here we go, fellas, on your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. All right, be seated. Easily this side. Hey, 
you know what? I only saw about four or five girls even standing on your feet. You can't get it all out by sitting on your backside, all right? You got to stand up and shout it out. And adults, you got to help them, okay? You're on their side. You got to help them, okay? So we need you up and at them, all right? And uh, I saw Cindy, Cynthia, was, she, was, she was yelling out, all right? Need Stiltner yelling and Kay yelling and Karen yelling. All of you guys in on it, all right? They need your help, okay? All right, we're going to turn it around now. You're going to be hallelujah, and you'll be praise the Lord, okay? All right, girls, on your feet. Let's hear you now, all right? Let's make up for it. I know you can scream, okay? But let me hear you do it real loud, all right? We'll start with hallelujah. Ready? Hallelujah. seated be seated now you're getting it all right now that was closer wasn't it that was closer but the winner is the boys still were louder all right girls you did a you did a great job that was much much better you're getting the hang of it now all right everybody sit up straight everybody sit up straight ryan turn around sit up straight look this way Jackson, turn around, sit up straight, look right up here, hands in your lap, okay, Mr. Eddie, we're ready for you. Down by the river, Down by the river. Took, a took a little walk, met up with the devil, met up with the devil. Had, a had a little talk, pushed him in the river. Hung him up to dry. Jesus can beat the devil. Any old time. With hey, hey. And a ho, ho. Now who could beat the devil? Who? Who? Any old time. How many of you remember our memory verse, Matthew, or I'm sorry, Matthew 4, 19? Let's say it together. And he saith unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. You remember the song that goes to it? We'll try it, okay? And he saith unto them, follow me, follow, I'm sorry, I, I have this song written two different ways. And he saith unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And straightway they left their nets and followed him. Not bad, a little bit louder this time, okay? And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And straightway they left their nets and followed him. Good job. Okay, let's all put our hands up in the air. And put them together. And very, very slowly, just as slowly as the hands of a clock, we'll lower our hands. When they get to your eyes, close your eyes. And when your hands get to your lips, close your mouth. And when they get to your chin, bow your head. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this day that you've given to us, this vacation Bible school, the pastor here, this church. Father, I pray that you will bless what we're doing I pray that all of these boys and girls will have a great time. I pray that they'll go home remembering everything that happened. Most of all, Father, we pray that if there's boys and girls here that are not saved, 
I pray, Lord, that they'll get saved tonight. I pray, Father, that you'll take over tonight. Help me, help Miss Cindy, help the workers. Help us to do a good job. I pray that everything that we say and do will lift up and bring honor and glory to your son, Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Thank you. All right, we're going to make a couple of balloons for the best boy and the best girl. But first of all, we need some helpers. Uh, I've got some balloons here. Miss Cindy, would you help me pass these out? Uh, all kinds of balloons. We are going to give these to adult workers. And when you get one of these, it's your job to look around for a kid that's doing a good job. And, uh, and give it to them sometime during the service, okay? Uh, ask, ask for volunteers, Miss Cindy. I'm sure Brother Yoder's up to it, though. But, but uh, is there anybody that's willing to help us out by looking for good, good, good boys? Not the kids. You'll keep them. Okay, there, there, Mrs. Slayball, there's a couple back there that raise their hands. And Miss Cindy, there's about five more. Miss Cindy, do you want help doing this, or should I make the other two balloons right now? Okay, I think she's got that. Okay, I'm going to need, let's see, I'm going to need a helper. Would you be my helper? Would you be my helper? Okay, come up here. I've got something for you to hold for me, all right? So I haven't got enough hands to do this all by myself. So you hang on to this for me, okay? There we go. And if you could... You could hold this for me. That will help me to be able to get it finished, okay? Just hold it just like that. Okay, I'll be right back in just a second here. And we got this. There we go. Now, these two balloons that I'm making right now, I'm only making these. Are you okay? Was that scary? It scared me. Okay, hang on. That's fine. That is absolute. I don't blame you a bit. I would abandon ship right away myself. Okay, here we go. We'll try that one more time here. Whoops. Sorry. Okay, there we go. So I'm only making two balloons for the quietest boy and the quietest girl. Now, Miss Cindy, Miss Cindy, do you want to pass these out yourself tonight? Uh, yeah, I'll let you pick out the quietest boy and the quietest girl for these two balloons, okay? And this one is for the boys. This palm tree goes to the quietest boy. Miss Cindy's going to be looking around for the quietest boy. And Miss Cindy, if you will come up here and tell the, the boys and the girls the rules, I'll go ahead and start the girls' balloon, okay? Cindy, would you pick one of the little girls to help me show them what this prize is for the quietest girl? Sure. One of the smaller ones. One of the small ones. Would you like to help? Come hey, on come up on here up to me. Here to Brother Eddie. 
This is what the girl is going to win. Okay, turn around and face to the back of the church. There you go. Okay, you kids could help me out, all right? Start walking that direction. Here comes the bride, all dressed in white. Thank you. Okay, you can go ahead back to your seat. This will go for the quietest girl. I'm going to set them right over here, Miss Cindy, so that you could look for the quietest boy and the quietest girl. Now, we've got a new memory verse tonight, another memory verse that Miss Cindy is going to share with you right now. Girls, to set up. Now I'm going to say the verse first, and then you repeat after me, okay? Matthew 5:16. Matthew 5:16. Let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Okay, let's just say that again. Matthew 5, 16. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works. That they may see your good works. And glorify your Father. And glorify your Father. Which is in heaven. Which is in heaven. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can say it together, okay? You think you're ready to say it together? Okay, let's give it a try. Matthew, Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Okay, now, now I've got a song that goes along with that. I'm going to go ahead and sing it the first time, and then you could help me sing it the second time. Wow, sorry about that. Excuse me, Mike. Oh. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light so shine before men. Okay, you guys look kind of confused. How many of you, you've never heard that song? We just sang it. Okay, you should have been paying attention. If you, ha if you did hear the song, go ahead and sing it with me. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light so shine before men. One more time. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light so shine before men. Good job. Thank you, boys and girls. Okay, Miss Cindy, if you could take a position to where you could see all of the boys and the girls, that way you could find out who is going to win those quiet prizes. Who's going to win the bridal veil for the girl and the palm tree for the boys. So sit up straight, I'll count to three, and then she'll start looking. And don't forget, there are a lot of adults out there that have balloons that they might be giving away any time, unless they take them home. Now, they'll hand them to you if you're being good, but if you start messing up and being bad after you get the balloon, they might take them right back. So let's be good tonight. Yes, ma'am.
Okay, boys and girls, let's say hi to Gilbert. Hi, boys and girls. Oh, this is exciting. Yes, it is. Very exciting. Look at all these boys and girls that came here. Boy, I just can't believe it. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, you can't believe that all these boys and girls came here tonight? No, I can't believe that they let you back in. Uh, <laughs> Gilbert, I, I, I think these folks like me here, and I like them. I love to come here and talk to them, and I think that they like to come here and talk to me. Yeah, do they really like looking at you. G Gilbert, <laughs> are you saying that I'm ugly? No, I'm not saying that you're ugly. I'm, I'm just saying there's a lot to look at. <laughs> a whole lot. And their eyes get tired. Gilbert. No, I'll tell you what. I have really been looking forward to this vacation Bible school. I only get to come here one, just once a year, so, sometimes twice a year, but I think it's been a long time since I was here the last time. What happened? Did you get lost? No, no, I didn't get lost. I, I, well, I, you see, that's my job. I go around. I'm an evangelist, so I travel a lot. It's kind of like that guy in the Bible. You know that there was a man in the Bible that Jesus told that went on a long journey. Oh, really? Yeah, that's right. Jesus would, told us a story about a man that was very rich, and he went on a long journey. But he was so rich and had so many gold coins that he couldn't take all of his money with him. It just wasn't practical. He would have been robbed. The gold was too heavy. So what he decided to do was call his three most faithful servants and divide his money up among his servants by talents. Talents? You mean like old America's got talent? You kind of look like Howie Mandel. Uh, no, not that kind of talents. I'm talking about, uh, well, it's a weight. And what you would do is you would use that weight to weigh your gold coins. And every talent had so many gold coins in it. I love gold coins! Uh, oh, I do too, Gilbert. I would love to have some gold coins. Yeah, you know my favorite tart? It's when you take the gold off and you eat the chocolate inside. Oh, you know what I'm talking about, Taster Slaydoll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, Gilbert, I'm talking about solid gold coins. Well, I'm talking about solid chocolate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, he decided that he was going to leave his gold with his trusted servant. So right away, he called in his most trusted servant, and he had more ability than all of the other servants. So he brought in that servant, and he, he said that he was going to give him five talents of gold coins. Five talents? That's a lot of chocolate. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a lot of gold. And then he brought in his second servant. And the second servant did not have as many abilities as the first servant. So he only gave his second servant two talents of gold coins. Hey, I want a talent. Oh, well, okay, I'll let you be the third servant, all right? He brought in his third servant, and he gave his servant, his third one, only one talent. Oh, I know, I know what my talent is. What's your talent? Lincoln, you look good. G Gilbert. <laughs> well, he divided all that gold among his servants, and the master went on his long journey. And while he was gone, his servants were in charge of all of that money. It was up to them to use that money the same way that the master would. He wanted them to be profitable. He wanted them to make one talent into two talents. He wanted his investment to grow. And after a very long time, eventually 
the master came back home. Oh, no! Why? What's wrong? My talent. Well, why? What's wrong with your talent? I ate it! Quick, hide me! No. <laughs> no, no, Gilbert. There is no hiding when the master returns, Gilbert. You have to face him. Well, he called in his servants one by one. He brought in the first servant, and the first servant said, Lord, you gave me five talents, five talents of gold, and I worked hard, and I invested, and I was very wise, and I turned it into five more talents, and here you go. Here are your ten talents. And the master said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Show off. No, he wasn't a show off. He was just doing what his master had told him to do. He was a faithful servant. And the Lord rewarded him according to his faithfulness. And then the second uh, servant came in. And the second servant looked at his master and he said, Lord, you gave me two talents. And I ate them, and they were delicious. N no. <laughs> he said, Lord, you gave me two talents, and I worked very hard, Lord, and I turned them into two more talents. And here you are, Lord, is, here is your four talents. And then the master called in his third servant. Oh, no. Well, there is no hiding now, Gilbert. The Lord said, well, servant, I gave you one talent, and I put you in charge of it. What did you do with the talent that I gave you? Well, you see, it's like this. Um, I, uh, I, I, I ate him! I can't believe it! I just couldn't resist that they were so good! No, no, the third servant did not eat the talent that the Lord gave him. What did he do? Well, the third servant took the talent that the Lord had given him, and he went and he digged a hole in the earth. And then he put the talent in the hole, and he covered it up with dirt. Dirt? That's right. Ooh, yuck, I'm not going to eat that now. Well, I don't blame you. Well, the master was furious. He was very upset with that third servant. And he said, take this wicked, unprofitable servant and throw him into outer darkness. Outer darkness? That's right. Take him and throw him into outer darkness. Then I don't like outer darkness. I don't want to be the third servant anymore. I want to be the first servant. Well, I think that that's a very good idea. You know what? I think that we all ought to want to be like the first servant because the first servant was faithful. He took what God had given to him and he became a profitable servant. He used those talents to serve the Lord. Oh, that's what I want to do. I don't want to go into outer darkness. <laughs> I don't blame you. Can I use the talent right now? Well, sure. What, what kind of talent do you want to use? I want to sing. Okay, I think that that's a very good idea. Well, why don't you go ahead and sing for us? You mean out loud? I usually sing in the shower. No, you can't. We're up here in front of the whole congregation. Come on, you can do it. Just sing a simple song. Sing, uh, sing, sing Jesus Loves the Little Children. All right. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, pink and green, weirdest kids you ever seen. That's not how it goes. You know better. It's red and yellow, black and white. If you're going to sing it, sing it right. Okay, I got it, I got it. Red and yellow, black and white. Put them together and watch them fight. Gilbert. <laughs> Just say good night, Gilbert. Good night, Gilbert. Thank you, thank you, Gilbert. Let's give Gilbert a hand, boys and girls.
Oh, soldier. Oh, soldier. Oh, soldier. Oh, soldier. Grab your Bible, follow me. I'm in God's infantry. If I die in the combat zone, lift my body, take me home. Lay my, bi lay my Bible across my chest. Tell my Lord I've done my best. Oh, soldier. Oh soldier. Oh, soldier. oh, soldier. Grab your Bible, follow me. I'm in God's infantry. All right, boys and girls. Oh, this song gets harder every year. Yeah, let's do that song. Uh, no, let's do this song. Do you know this one? I'm in right out, right up, right down, right happy all the time. Am I the only one going to stand up, boys and girls? I'm in right out, right up, right down, right happy all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart from sin. I'm in right out, right up, right down, right happy all the time. You guys are lazy. I can't believe I'm faster than you kids are. I'll tell you what. I don't know if I sing it any faster, they might have a heart attack. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to crank up the speed. There we go. That's in my hips. There we go. All right, you ready? This is going to be faster. I don't, I don't think they could keep up with me. I'm in right, all right, up right, I have the all time. I'm in right, all right, up right, I have the all time. Since Jesus Christ came in and cleanse my heart from sin. Deep breath. I in right out, right up, right down, happy all the time. Tip, toe, tip, in God's house, in God's house, in God's house, tiptoe, tiptoe, in God's house, we must be very quiet. Tiptoe, tiptoe, in God's house, in God's house, in God's house, tiptoe, tiptoe, in God's house. We must be very quiet. Tip, toe, tip, Hold your hands. I'm going to look for a helper. No, you got to hold them. There you go. Let me see. Would you like to be my helper? No? I don't blame you. <laughs> Would you like to be my helper? Okay, come on up here. Oh, uh, let's see. You know what? I need a bunch more balloons. Here we go. Let's just do it this way. All right, your only job, is, go ahead and stand right here, your only job is to hold balloons for me, okay? Because this one takes a lot of balloons, and I can't hold them while I'm making them. Okay. Um... 
You've, you've held a balloon before, right? Okay. I should have got a resume. Okay, here you go. Okay, good job. Okay, now I live on my grandpa's old farm. That farm's been there for a little over 100 years now. And I live in the very same house where my mother was born. My grandfather's name was Oki Hayes. Now, if you find anybody old enough that was alive back then when my grandfather was alive, they would know who Oki Hayes was. Everybody knew who Oki was because he had his hands in all kinds of businesses. He raised animals, he had pigs, cattle, he had a huge farm, he made orange blossom honey, all kinds of things. And, and he was really into horticulture and developed a lot of different kind of nuts and fruits. But the one thing about his property that I liked the most is that Grandpa had fruit trees all over his property. My grandpa always said that if a fruit tree did not bear fruit, then it was good for nothing. So he didn't even plant any trees that weren't fruit trees. Matter of fact, there was only one tree on the whole property, on all of grandpa's property, that didn't bear some kind of fruit. And that was my, my grandmother, Martha Hayes had planted a pine tree, and that blue spruce pine tree is still out in front of the house where I live. I love fruit trees. I like to climb fruit trees, and I like to eat the fruit on the fruit trees. I just really enjoyed two balloons stuck together. I just really enjoyed living on that property and climbing the apple trees and the pear trees. He had persimmon trees, he had plums, uh, just more trees than I could even think of. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take these from you one by one. You're doing a very good job. Now, when I've got all of these, don't go and sit down yet, okay? Because we've still got a little bit more work to do even after I've grabbed them all. You'll still be holding them, in other words, after I get through making this. There we go. Okay. Well, I'll show you. If I make a twist here, eh, yeah, right about there, and here, and here, and you're going to be our fruit tree. Ready? There we go. Let's give her a hand. You, look, you make a really good fruit tree. Okay, now, one of the fruits that I really, really liked was the apples. Grandpa had a lot of different apple trees. I don't even know the names of all of the different kind of apples that Grandpa grew, but I do know, do know that he had Red Delicious and Granny Smith. And the house where my mom and dad lived which was right next door to my grandpa's, had my favorite apple tree. And it had wonderful red apples. So I'm going to put a red apple on here. Now, boys and girls, if you went out to an apple tree, a red, delicious apple tree, what kind of fruit do you think you'd be expecting to grow on it? How about if we lived a whole lot further south than we are right now, maybe as far south as South America, we have banana trees. How many of you guys like bananas? Wouldn't it be something to have a banana tree in your backyard? Oh, I love bananas. We'll go ahead and put a banana tree on here. 
Now, if you went out to a banana tree and it was bearing fruit, what kind of fruit do you think that it would be bearing? Okay, let me ask you this. Now, I know, I know, grapes don't grow on trees, but how many of you like to eat grapes? I love grapes. Now, my grandpa also had a lot of fruit vines on his property. What if you went out to a grapevine to pick some fruit? What kind of fruit do you expect would be on that grapevine? There you go, grapes. Almost there. I think I blew this one up too big. And one more. Okay. Okay. Now where should we put this one at? Whoops. Okay, we'll put our grapes right here. Let me see. How many of you like uh, yellow, yellow apples? I like the yellow apples. I think the yellow apples are sweeter. Let's put a yellow apple on there. Grandpa had a lot of those, too. You know what? I think we could stand to have another banana on here, too. We've got plenty of room still on this tree. But I have a question for you, boys and girls, and I really want you to think about it. But when I ask you this question, don't say the answer out loud. Don't let anybody know who it is. Who, don't let anybody know what the answer is, if you know it. Because if I call on you, and if you answer it, I'm going to go ahead and give you a special prize. What happened to you today? I'll make a balloon for you. Here we go. Let me go ahead and put this banana up here. Now remember, if you know the answer, don't say the answer out loud. Just wait till I call on you. That way you might have a chance to win a balloon. Don't raise your hand yet. I haven't asked the question yet. I can guarantee you don't know the answer now. Jesus wants us, when we're saved, to bear fruit. He wants us to be profitable. Remember our story that Gilbert told about the about the servants that were supposed to be profitable servants? We are supposed to be profitable. We are supposed to bear fruit. Grandpa sold apples. He sold this fruit. If a tree did not bear fruit, could he get any money selling it? No, it wouldn't, wouldn't be profitable, would it? Here's my question. Are you ready? Raise your hand if you know the answer. What kind of fruit do you think a Christian should bear? Raise your hand if you know the answer. Don't say it out loud, please. What kind of fruit should a Christian bear? Holiness? I think Christians ought to be holy. The Bible says, be holy, for I am holy. What, do you, what kind of fruit should a Christian bear? Apples? How many of you guys like apples? How about this young lady right here in the black shirt? What kind of fruit should a Christian bear? She's thinking, please don't say watermelons. What? Huh? You don't know? That's, well, that's a good answer. What kind of fruit should a Christian bear? Potatoes. Okay. What type of fruit should a Christian bear? I love all of these fruits that they're mentioning. Okay, let me, a let me ask you a couple more questions. What type of fruit does a grapevine bear? Grapes. What type of fruit does a banana tree bear? Banana. What type of fruit does a red apple tree bear? Red apple. What type of fruit does a yellow apple tree bear? Red what type of fruit does a Christian bear? Red Christians, that's right. Hey, you were a good helper. Let's give her a hand. Why don't you go give this to Miss Cindy and she's going to hold it for you, okay? Miss Cindy, can you hold that right over here? 
and they come back right up here to me. I've got one more job for you, okay? Let's see how this works. Okay. Let's say that we're both Christians, all right? So I'm saved, she's saved, and uh, we, we're at Bible Baptist Church, and we are supposed to be fruitful, right? Is that what we're supposed to be? We're supposed to bear Christians. Here's how you bear fruit as a Christian. We go out and tell people about how we got saved, and then they'll get saved, and they'll become Christians, right? So Now, how many... I, I don't know. You know what? Sometimes it's scary to tell people about Jesus. Maybe they'll get mad. Maybe, maybe they'll be embarrassed. Maybe they'll say no. But do you think that if you tell enough people about Jesus... Do you think that we could at least win one person to Jesus a year? Okay. One person to Jesus. That's all we're asking is just to win one person to Jesus a year. Now, let's say we give ourselves, how many years do you think we should give ourselves to make the church grow? Four? Let's go with four years, okay? So four years, we win at least one person to Jesus in a year. How much do you think the church will grow after four years if all we could do is just win one person in a year? Now, it's just me and her, right? How many do you think? Four. Okay, here we go. You ready? So we're going to go out, and we're going to go pass out tracts, and we're going to go ahead and tell people how we get saved. We're going to invite them to church so Pastor Slayball can preach the gospel to them, but we're going to do our best to get one, okay? You go get one and bring them up here. I'll go get one and bring them up here, all right? Okay, let's go. I'm going to go get me one. Here we go. You come up here with me? Uh, amen. I got one. You got one already? Okay, that's our first year. Okay, we, we want at least one person in our year, right? That's not too bad. That's more than a lot of Christians win in a year. But that's pretty good. Now, year number two, are you ready? Now, guess what? We've got a Christian here, and we've got a Christian here. We've doubled. So you guys go out and get one. Let's see if we can get one in a year, all right? Let's go get one and bring them up here. Okay, let's see. You done said something, so now you're in trouble, buddy. I got him. I got me a big one here. Somebody more my size. You got one yet? All righty, here we go. You got one yet? If, if they won't come, get somebody else. Don't, don't get discouraged if they won't come. Now, did you get one too? You didn't get one? Go get you one. Somebody will come. All right, bring them on up here. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now guess what? We got some more people in here. Is it their job to be fruitful too? Let's go be fruitful then. Bring another one up here. Here's our third year. You ready? Now, this is all by just winning one person in a year. You go come with me? All right. Come on up here. All right. Amen. Going out to the highways and the byways, right? Good job. Now we've got 16. Hey, we're only on year number three. Just winning one person in a year. And this, 16 after just three years. Let's go out there and for our fourth year. Now, guess what? We've got a whole lot more Christians up here now, right, don't we? Okay, let's go get one more, guys. One more year. We said four years. Let me see. Oh, I'll take that one right there. Will you come with me? Okay, come on. Amen. Good. I got me one. There we go. Here they are. Hey, hey, I think the church is growing. I think we're being profitable. What do you think? As a matter of fact, it looks like there might even be more up here than there are down there in these rows where the kids were. Okay, how many do we have up here? Or should? 32. Amen. Let's give them a hand. You guys could go back to your seats. Good job. Hey, 
And that is how churches grow. That is how missions work. It's people going out and being faithful to what God has given them. Hey, you know what the master gave to his servant? A lot of you think, well, it was gold coins, wasn't it? Those gold coins never belonged to that servant. When the master came back, he gave them right back to the servant. That's not what the master gave to the servant. You know what the master gave the servant? An opportunity to be faithful. And if they took that opportunity to be faithful, then they were profitable. That's what we're supposed to be doing, is being profitable. Let me show you why. I'm going to make another couple balloons up here. Should have had these already blown up. Didn't think about it. How are you doing over there, Miss Cindy? Have you picked out your winners yet, or are you still looking for quiet boys and girls? You have a few picked out? Okay, let's help Miss Cindy out. I'm going to go ahead and count to three. And when I count to three, we're going to go ahead and sit up as straight as we can, eyes straight ahead, and be really, really quiet to help Miss Cindy pick out the person that's being the quietest. One, two, three. There. There's our cloud. Had an awful lot of clouds lately in the sky. You see, people outside of the walls of this church, most of the time they don't know very much about God. Matter of fact, it's getting worse and worse. It used to be, back when I was a kid, at least your grandparents would tell you something about God. But people have their ideas. They know that God is up. I mean, heaven's supposed to be up there, so God's supposed to be up there. And they look up, and they see the sun shining, and it's nice and warm. They say, well, that must be what God's like. He's warm, and he's loving. And you know what? That's true. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, nobody loves like God does. He loves everybody. But then there's some people that look up into the sky and they see something entirely different. Whew, like the other night. Miss Cindy's laughing because she knows that I don't like thunder. It doesn't bother her like it does me. But if you were looking up in the sky the other night when it was thundering, you would have seen an entirely different picture. You wouldn't have seen warm sunshine up there. You wouldn't have thought about a loving God. You would have thought about God being a vengeful, judging God that hates sin. And he's just sitting up there waiting so that he could punish sin because he hates it so much. And you know what? That's true too. Matter of fact, God hates sin so much that it has to be paid for. No exceptions. You say, little kids too? That's right. Sin has to be paid for. And the Bible says that there's only one payment for sin. Death. The wages of sin is death. Brother Eddie, I'm just a little kid. I mean, we're at vacation Bible school, right? And you're telling me that the wages of sin is death and every sin must be paid for? That's absolutely right. But that's not the end of the story. The story gets a lot better because God loved us so much 
that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us and pay that price for us, pay for all of our sins so that we could have a home in heaven. And it's a free gift, absolutely free gift. Boys and girls, even if you are not saved, do you realize that all of your sins have already been paid for on the cross? That's not the problem. I mean, it's already there. It's already free. Here's the problem. You haven't received that free gift yet. What do you have to do to get a free gift? If I was going to give this out as a free gift to this young lady right here. I'm picking her because she hadn't been paying attention. <laughs> she didn't work real hard for it, did she? Nope. And she hadn't got any money. She can't pay me for it. But there is one thing that she has to do to get this free gift. I hope she does it. No, uh, no not you, her. Okay, there. She took it. She accepted it. Now, I've done this object lesson before where some kids got scared and folded their hands, folded their arms, and said, I said, are you sure you don't want to take it? And they were embarrassed or they were scared. And I've had to pick somebody else to give that balloon to. And if there's somebody here that's not saved, and Jesus is offering you a, a home in heaven. And all you have to do is accept him as your savior. And if you're sitting there going, won't you please get saved? I mean, nobody's looking. Just go, get up out of your seat and come up here and we'll take the Bible and show you how. He's going to have to move on to somebody else. Can you remember a time when you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, oh, when I was 10 years old, I remember when I prayed right here in this church, and I, I, I told God that I was a sinner. And, and, I, and I wanted to be saved. I wanted a home in heaven. And I prayed, and I trusted Jesus to be my Savior. Have you ever done that? Because if you've never accepted Jesus, I want to give you a chance to do that tonight. Let's all bow our head and close our eyes. Every head's bowed. Every eye is closed. Nobody's looking around. 